there's a point in every project where you'll need real data. We've been using SF symbols and place marker text in our wireframes. In this lesson, we're going to add the menu for the Hulia Pizza Company into our project by importing a model and assets while reviewing much of what we've covered as we get these new models and assets working. Now you're going to find a download file for everything we need on GitHub or on my Patreon site at these URLs. Now I've already downloaded the file from the website, so I'm just going to go to the files in my iPad here. You'll see that there is a zip file here. And all you need to do is tap that zip file, and that will unpack it into a folder. And inside the folder, you'll find two folders. Now, in those folders, you'll find one, the assets, which is all of our photos. And if you go back, you can go to the models, and there's going to be our new menu model that we'll be using in our project. Now, I'm going to go back into my project here. And I'm going to go ahead and add this to my menu on the side there in the navigator. You'll see at the top a little button that's got a plus and a document. That's to add documents. And I'm going to hit the insert from in the menu that shows up there. And I get a menu of a whole bunch of different stuff. In this case, it's set for my iPad Pro downloads, but that's not where I want to be. I'm actually on my iPad in the downloads folder. Now, probably the easiest way to do this is just go to search and just type it in, which is HPC underscore. And there you'll see it right there. Uh, it's the first one is iCloud Drive HPC 0207. Now, I have a few other copies here, but we're going to just use that one here. And I'll tap that. And then I'm going to go into the models first and add my menu model. And so there it is. And I'm just going to tap on it and you'll see that it selects itself. Then I can tap open. And you'll see that I now have another file in there called menu model 2. You'll also notice all the way in the bottom here, and I'm going to scroll up here so you can see it that we've got an invalid de redeclaration of mem menu model. We have two menu model classes in our project now. You only have one or the compiler gets confused and starts giving you messages like this. And it can't decide which one it is. You can actually see there's more messages here. And if I go to the error messages, you'll see there's another one in content view that says ambiguous use of init, which is the same thing. It knows there's two, it can't figure out which one. Menu model is saying, hey, I've got two of these. I don't know what to do with them. And we'll talk about that last one in a little bit. So let's go ahead and close that back up. We can fix this really easy. Now, in our menu model that we have here in, in the menu model folder, I can just like change the name here because it's looking for unique names. So if I go in here and change the name old, that solves the problem. Now this menu model two is my menu model. And the one here in menu model is an old version and it has a different name. So it's not becoming a problem. Now I have in this folder here, the one I called menu model, that's really no longer about menu model. It's about menu item. So I can also rename some of this stuff so it makes more sense. So I'm gonna hold down my finger on the menu model name there and then I'll hit rename and rename that menu item because it's really what it's about now. Now hit return and I can make this menu model since I don't have two names of these anymore. Rename that into menu model. Now another thing that you may want to do here is we now have two things that are involved with the menu itself, the model. It's the menu item and the menu model. I may want to make a model folder so that I can keep these two relatively together and keep them away from the views. I can do that the same way I started to do this. Let's go up to this add file. This time I'm going to use folder. I have a new folder. I'm going to call that model. Once I have that, I can drag menu item into model and I can drag menu model into model. So now I've got them in this folder. It's now I can actually close it up if I want to. But you also see that they're indented, which makes it a lot easier to keep them organized as you're going back and forth in all these different files and everything else is a view or something else. So you can organize yourself better by using those kinds of folders. All right. 
Now let's go into menu model and we've got one more error here. It says extra arguments at positions four and five and call. And we look here and what the, what is it talking about? Well, we got position one is ID, position two is name, position three is price. Position four and five are new fields. They're description and rating. I put more information into this menu item, but if you go into menu item, it doesn't exist yet. We only got ID, name, and price. And then we got the two computed properties of image, name, and formatted price. So I need to put these in. And if you look again at these, uh, I can pretty much guess what these are. We've already worked with them pretty much. One's a string and one's an integer. So I can go back up here into menu item. And just after price, I can put var description, and that's a string. And I can put var rating, and that's an integer. Okay. And that error just appears, but we get a different one. Okay. And it's saying there's init declared here. Okay. So what's that about? Well, if we go down a little further, you can see the problem. Okay. It's right here. This is the real problem. That's just telling you where it is. It's saying that test menu item one doesn't have a description or rating, and so it can't work with this. Okay, so what we're gonna do for that is one of two things. One option for this is if you have default values for some of these things, you can just put the default value in. So for example, I could put a description value of description here, okay? And that would be my default description. And I may have a rating of let's say three. You see the error disappears. Okay, that's one way of doing this. And it's it's an option that you have if you have things that are gonna have the same value over a long periods of time and only change in certain situations as we showed in some of the earlier videos, that's one option. The other option, which is what I'm gonna try next, is I'm gonna go over here to menu model I'm going to tap on menu item here and I'm going to copy this. And now I have a real item that goes in here. So now I can go into menu item, delete it, paste, and I have a comma there so I get rid of the comma. And I forgot a space there so I'll just put the space in there. And there you have another option, which is you take one of your data points from the original menu and put it right in here. And there's lots of different ways of doing this. I just did a literal for this one. So that's the two options you have for this. Okay. And you see we've got no more errors here. I'm just going to go to the preview for a sec. Let's see what's happening. And you can see we're starting to get somewhere. Uh, we've got different names. We've got a lot of different names here. All right. So then I'm going to close this back up so we have more room to work. Now we're going to start adding the images, and we'll do the same as we did to the open files. So we're going to go back over here to our navigator. I'm going to go ahead and hit this button on top for adding files, and I'm going to do the insert from. Uh, for photos, you maybe need to do them from photo, which that will go to your photo album, and then you can put things in your photo album and take them from there. I actually have files, so I'm going to use the insert from, and let's go ahead and go to the on my iPad. I'll hit the magnifying glass, and we'll type in HPC underscore, and there's 0207. I'll go to the assets, and I have a lot of assets here, okay? I've actually got two sizes. We'll use one for a large display and one for a thumbnail, and so what we're going to do with this is I'm going to need all these images. Now, you can go here, and you can tap away like this, but you'll notice on the bottom, it says select all, so I can just hit the select all button and select all of them and then open them. And if you go down and scroll, you'll see you've now got all of those images are now in your project. Now, what are we going to do with those? That's going to happen in menu item. And if we go up here in menu item, I'm going to get rid of that for now. If we go up here in menu item, we have our image name. And I can start changing my image name here. So I'm going to change this for my large pictures are going to be image names. And so I'm going to change this to the same ID. You'll see if I go back over here, 
I have a name feature that I said ID underscore large is going to be a large picture. So all I need to do is put in something like this. And now it's going to find those pictures. You'll notice here I had an error on the bottom here. And it was hiding behind my little thing here. So let's go get up to the console and you can see it. You've got a whole bunch of errors here that say known symbol name this in the symbol set. That's because we have our image set for an SF symbol, and this is not an SF symbol. But we're going to fix that in a second. We're going to do one more here because I've got to do the small ones. And I'm going to call the small ones. I'm going to make a new computed property. And we can copy this one to speed it up a little. All right. And I'm going to go over here to image name. And I'm going to call that thumb. Thumbnail name. And we'll make this small. And again, it's still giving me errors, and it's going to be a lot of errors. Now it's going to tell me it can't find large, can't find small. I mean, it's finding all kinds of problems. All right, now let's get rid of that issue. That all is going to start happening in H&V menu item view. So let's go over to H&V menu item view. And I'm going to start here with H menu item view, because that's the one I'm actually using in the menu. And I can look at how I did this. And the real issue here is right there. The system name is the problem. I'm going to get rid of system name. For an image that's a photo, we only need the image name. So we can just use this. Now, I don't want image name here. I want thumbnail name here. So I'm going to delete that. Go dot. And pick up on thumbnail name. I'm also going to make two more changes here. The first one is right there. I have a literal in my ratings view. I'm going to want to start reading that data out of item for my ratings view. So I'm going to change this to item dot rating. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. We've got the text menu description. Change that to item dot description. All right, I can take a look at that. And if I look at it for menu item view here, you can see we're starting to get something that looks pretty nice. We've got now our description. We've got the name of the food. We've got the rating on top that is reading properly. But if we go over here to app preview, you will see one thing that's weird. And that is the circles are getting smaller and smaller. And that's due to a small problem we have here with scale to fit. I'll explain it more later in a later video. But for right now, all I want you to do is change it to fill. And you'll see that it works fine if you just do that. It's a bunch of layout things, but we've talked about more about how the layout engine works in a later video. We're going to do the same kind of thing for the V menu item view. So I'll go over here to V menu item view. I close this back up again. We'll do the same kind of thing, which is set to system name. This time, I only need the image name because I want a big image. Okay. Uh, I may want to look at this again. Let's pull this back up here. I'm going to do a couple of extra things on this one. I'm going to use this differently than I used it before. I'm going to get rid of the frame here. And that makes it a bigger pizza. And I don't want a circle. I'm going to want a rounded rectangle. So I'm going to change this to rounded rectangle. And I'll make that 10. Okay. And that gives me a much different image. I'm going to add some padding to it just so we can see the adding edges there. I'm going to change the description here too. So first of all, you'll see that we've got this if is title bit here. I'm going to select that as text. And I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to place it underneath the H stack because I want it in a vertical stack here. And okay, let's go paste that back in. And now you see the menu description is underneath. That'll make for a better description as far as things are concerned. Now, I've got a lot of different other options I can do here. Uh, one that I might want to do is I'll put the price all the way over on the trailing edge here. So I may put a spacer. And I'm also going to want to put in the rating. And let's put the rating in above this H stack. So let's put in rating view here. And that's going to be an item. So put an item. 
And so I can put them a rating right above where the margarita pizza is. And then on the bottom here, I'm going to fix this literal and make that my description. Item dot description. And there we have some nice thing. It's a little small. I've got caption here for my text. We may want to change that to something else. The default is body. I can actually just delete this, but I'm going to make it body just so I'm more explicit. And now I can read it better. Okay. And you've got a pretty good idea of what's going on. You could actually put a little more padding in here. I may put a padding on the H stack, for example. Like that. Now let's go back over to app preview. That's not really involved with anything yet, but let's go over here to app preview. But we have this pretty nice looking menu, which has some pizzas on it. And if we go back over here to H menu item view, we can see our individual ones and the menu item view, which we'll be using in a little bit, we'll have this detail view that we can stick on there to say, okay, here's what your pizza is going to look like. And you can get a bigger, more accurate picture of what the pizza looks like. You'll notice a lot of things. First of all, we've lost our surf girl. If I were to scroll on this, it's not scrolling anywhere. I'm just it's stuck in a big menu. And that's a bit of a problem. So we still got to fix that. But I want to point out two important things about what we just did. Adding models to what you have as a wireframe should be as seamless as possible. Because the way we set up this course and the way I added more features to this model, which is very common for people to do, that means more work. And we had to go through all these extra steps. Your best bet is to anticipate what you want to use in your model as early as possible so you make the least number of changes as possible to your project. So figure out what you want to do completely before you ever start coding. Now, we've got this menu problem that I can't seem to scroll this thing and I'm stuck on Big Island to meet lovers and I can't even see my barbecue chicken on the bottom there. So we now need to do something else to get this to scroll. And in our next lesson, we'll solve that by adding some scrolling to the menu.